Hello and welcome to a very nerdy bike packing setup video. A few days ago, I got back from my second trip up South Australia's legendary Mawson Trail, a 900-ish kilometer mixed terrain extravaganza of dust and wind and all kinds of fun stuff. Check out the links in the description below to more content on the Mawson Trail on Love Elo Cheetah. And let's dive into the bikepacking setup of my Bomb Track Beyond Plus 2. Cut to very sleepy James who'd only just finished the trail. Okay, so starting with the frame. It is made of steel and one of my favorite things about it is it has a sh whole lot of mounting points for bottles. So a couple there, one there. There's ones on the front fork as well. It's just a very, very well sorted um, adventure bike. I have made a few changes from how it was uh, on the shop floor and that is a Thompson seat post just because they have a bit of sideways flex in them which makes it a bit more comfortable. I chucked a specialized power saddle on. This is just like a road saddle just because I like the power saddle and it was really good. I found it comfortable even though this was a very, a very, very, very bumpy ride. Up front I chucked in a 70mm Thompson stem just because it's a little bit longer. The bike actually ships with a 55. Now these are very interesting. These are SQ Lab 710 grips and these are kind of made specifically for bike packing and sort of long, well, bike touring, I guess. And they've been really good. They have like a couple of hand positions which are very comfortable. You can have your hand there, you can have your hand further in, and they just have been really nice. My hands have uh, fared very well. Now these are SQ Lab inner bar ends, and I absolutely love these. They cost about 70 bucks and they're $70 well spent. What you do is you just hold them like that and it just brings your hands, it gives you a different hand position. You can tuck your elbows in and they just sort of make you a bit more aero, make you a bit more comfortable. Really big fan of those, SQ Lab inner bar ends. Other stuff, I just have an Exposure Joystick Mark 13 just because they're a really, really great light and they give you heaps of options for runtime, which I really like. Just my bog standard Garmin 520. It's pretty reliable. Not really much to say about that one. Drivetrain is just a SRAM GX Eagle. Um, the legendary big 50, 10 to 50 at the back and the 32, I'm pretty sure, at the front. Can't really remember. Um, as you can see, it is pretty bloody filthy. Um, this is a very, very dirty, dusty trail. Um, so the bike is absolutely horrendous. Have a look into the cassette. It is just full of crap. It is really, really gross. So that's going to be fun to clean when I get home. The GX Eagle Breezer Railer has just suffered an absolute beating. It is filthy, <laughs> and and the hanger is bent. And look at the look at the crust on those jockey wheels. Beautiful. It survived though, and that's all I ask of it. The chain is actually very, very clean. I put a big coating of squirt lube on it before I left, and I put a little bit more squirt on it a few days ago, and look at this. Just nothing. Clean as. Beautiful. Now the wheels and tires are an interesting one. They are in WTB Scraper I-40 rim, so they are a full 40 mils wide. And the tires are WTB Trailblazers in 2.8 inch width. And I have mixed feelings about these. They're a very good gravel tire. As you can see, it's got like a pretty, uh, it's got a fairly efficient tread pattern on it and they actually roll quite nicely. They are not very good for mountain biking because as you can see, all the sort of, all the knobs are focused right on the top, so there's not really much cornering grip on these, but that's okay. I didn't really need a lot on this trip in particular. Now, the problem I had with these WTB tires is that on this front tire, I got a very small split right in here, and it just would not seal with the tubeless. And unfortunately, this is the second set of these tires I've had um, split in pretty much exactly the same way. So I'm actually going to look for alternative options for bike packing tires in the future because as much as I like them I just don't really trust them anymore so this one was tubeless had to put a tube in which was a pain in the ass and I don't like doing it um, so yeah WT Trailblazers not not a huge fan now all right so now I'll just run you through all the sort of bags and the general setup and bits and pieces we've got an Apertura saddle pack this is the 14 litre um, dry bag version I kept all my clothes in there 
This is uh, also an Apigura top tube bag. I can't remember exactly what they call it right now. Um, this one's, it's, it's a fine bag. It's been through a lot with me, so, you know, no major complaints about that one. Up front here we have a big bike bag dude top tube garage. Pretty, uh, pretty generously sized bag in there. Um, this is where I kept sort of electronics, spare battery, kept my phone and wallet in there. Um, these feed bags are also by Apertura. I think they still, I've had them for a couple of years and I really don't like these. These are the one sort of part of my setup that I just don't like. The reason is you can't close them properly. You've got like a draw cord that doesn't tie off. So you can tighten it up, but it's still open. So things can get wet, things can fall out. Pain in the ass, do not recommend these Apigura bags at all. Now mounted to the fork, I have Blackburn outpost cages, one on each side, and they are holding on to uh, two just bog standard Cedar Summit dry bags, and they have my sleeping gear in them. Um, wasn't hugely aero, <laughs> as you can see, uh, which was a real problem because we basically were pushing into the wind for a straight week. So, yeah. Um, it's actually a pretty good setup, but just if it's crazy windy, which it was, it's not a lot of fun. One of my favorite bags is this one from a company called Skin Grows Back. They're based in Melbourne. This is all handmade in Melbourne. Just a nice handy zip, opens up in there, kept a whole bunch of food in there. Good bag, I like that one. Moving into the middle of the bike, I have one of my absolutely hottest tips for this sort of riding side exit cages. These are elite side exit cages. You can sort of pull them out sideways from both sides of the bike, which is very, 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 very handy. And just some Zephyl Magnum one liter bottles. Now this is another one of my hot tips for bike packing. This is a Arundel mandible cage. So this is holding a one and a half liter SIG bottle. And that's possible because it has a little adjustment dial on there so you can expand it and contract it according to what bottles you want to have in there that dial just rotates it doesn't rotate very smoothly now because I filled it with dirt but yeah that's been a really handy to have that amount of water close to the bike hey buddy you're in the video now whoop whoop see ya and I think all that's left is my handy Shimano XTR pedals that are just absolutely bulletproof and I love them. <laughs> There's really not much more to say about those. Oh, now this is just a nuke proof strap which kept a spare tube in it, which unfortunately I did have to use because of all my front wheel problems. Now if you are curious about my sleep setup, I cannot be bothered pulling it all out to show you, but in this bag I have a Sea to Summit Spark SP3 which is rated down for very, very, very cold conditions. Did not get very cold except for probably one night um, on this trip, so it was overkill for basically every other night. Good sleeping bag though, I quite like it. And on this side I had my bivy and my mat. So my mat is a Climate Static V2 and my bivy is a Kathmandu XT bivy, I think? That sounds about right. And that about does it for my Mawson Trail bikepacking setup. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time.